On this video, we will talk about the area of polygons in the coordinate plane. So let's start by looking at this small introduction question, which states, let's try to find the area of the given figure on the right, which we are referring to triangle ABC. And just a small reminder, remember that whenever we talk about a triangle, the area is being defined as one half of the base times the height. So in order for us to find the area, we need to define the base of the triangle and the height of the triangle. So just by looking at the way that this triangle has been defined on the coordinate plane, let's assume the line segment BC, this is the base of my triangle. And it's not that difficult to find the length between BC. Uh, we can just find the distance formula to find the length of BC. But now what's important here is that how are we going to find the height of this triangle? So to define the height of this triangle, we have to define some kind of a perpendicular line. We don't know where it is, so this is just a rough sketch. We have to define a perpendicular line that passes through point A. Let's call this point R. So now that we have defined such a perpendicular line, which we're going to refer to the height, once we know where R is located at, we need to find the distance between A and R. And we can do that by using the distance formula. But now notice that the way that the problem is stated is not as straightforward as the examples that we have been doing before. So perhaps there can be a better way to find the area of polygons in the coordinate plane. Sometimes we can use the area formula and that's okay. But sometimes problems are set up in such a way that perhaps this way is not that convenient. And today we're going to introduce a new way to find area of polygons in the coordinate plane, not just triangles, but the following techniques that we're going to be discussing today can be applicable to all polygons. So like we stated, the height is not that straightforward to find. So therefore, we're going to use a different technique. Then using the typical area formula, one half to base times the height. So let's get started. What are What is this new technique? Well, we're actually going to discuss two techniques. The first technique that we're going to define to find area of any polygons in the coordinate plane, we're going to refer to that as the encasing method. So what exactly is the encasing method? Well, the encasing method states the following. So let's identify the vertex of this triangle that we want to find the area of. So here we have three vertices and let's try to encase it. Or in other words, let's try to box it using the vertices of my triangle here. So notice that what I'm doing here I'm just going to box this triangle here. I'm just going to create a box around it. Or in other words, we are encasing this triangle. And notice that by doing this, what we, what we have created is, keep in mind that what we want to do is still the same. We still want to find the area. We still want to find the area of that triangle. So the objective doesn't change. Our objective, it is still this, to find this area. But notice that by encasing this triangle, what we have done, we have created other triangles. So let's call this triangle, triangle one. Let's do it in blue. So let's call this triangle, triangle one. This is the triangle that, we, that I'm stating that we're going to call triangle one. And this triangle right here, we're going to call it triangle two. And this triangle right here is what we're going to call triangle three. And now notice that perhaps the area of the highlighted figure, which is the triangle that we wanted to find the area of, can be seen as the area of the box, which again, by the box, I'm referring to this whole thing. 
minus triangle one minus triangle two minus triangle three. So what we have said is this, look, I can have, I can look at this figure as a rectangle. And if I take away this section, and if I take away this section, and if I take away this section, what's going to be left is the triangle that I want to find the area of. And this is exactly what we're going to be using. So this technique is what we call the encasing method. You can encase or you can box the figure and then just subtract the triangles that are, are created outside of the figure that you want to find the area of. So let's actually do this now. So let's, let's find the area of the box. So the area of the box, notice that this is a rectangle. So this area can be seen as base times height. And the base is one, two, three, four, five, six times one, two, three. So we have a six by three, which is equivalent to 18. Uh, let's call it unit square. We don't know exactly if it's centimeters. So the area of the box is 18 units. Now, the area of the first triangle, so we're going to concentrate on this triangle now. But I notice that since this is a rectangle, that we know that this is exactly a 90 degree triangle. So therefore, I can see that my base is this section, and I can see that my height in this section. So therefore, the area of the first triangle is going to be 1 half times the base where the base is one times the height, where the height is exactly one, two, three, four, five, six units. So therefore this is six over two, which is just three. So the area of this triangle, it's of three units. Now let's find the area of the second triangle. Again, since this is a, it's a rectangle, so we can see it as a right triangle, where right now my base on triangle two is going to be of one unit, and my height is going to be of two units. So now this becomes two over two, which is just one. And lastly, let's find the area of the third triangle. Not again, this is a right triangle, so I can see that my base, so let me write this, Write this down. The area of triangle three is one half times the base, where right now my base can be seen as one, two, three. And my height is one, two, three, four, five. So now this becomes 15 over two, which it's about 7.5 units square. So Let's do it here. All right, good. So once that we have all this information down, once that we have all this information down, then all we have to do is just get the area of the box, just like we stated here. So this is what we're going to call as the encasing method. Let's get the area of the box, which is 18. So now, as a conclusion, the area of triangle ABC it's going to be the area of the box, which we found it to be 18, minus the area of triangle 1, which is 3, minus the area of triangle 2, which we found it to be just 1, minus the area of triangle 3, which is exactly 7.5. And once we calculate all this, we can see that the total area is going to be 6.5 units square. So notice that there was no need for us to find the height of this triangle because it is easier for us to find the height of the right triangles because the height of the right triangle is just one of the legs. And that leg is going to be easy to find since it's always going to be some kind of a vertical or horizontal movement. So this is the benefit of this so-called encasing method. Now, we have another method which we're going to be introducing now. Still, we're still going to find the area of the same triangle, but now we're going to 
still find the area of the same triangle, but now we're going to use a different method. And this method is what we're going to refer to as the shoelace method. So let's just show that regardless of which method that you use, we're still going to get the same result. So what is the shoelace method? Well, the shoelace method is the following. We're going to identify the vertices of this or whichever figure, which in this case is a triangle. So we have three vertices and let's identify their actual coordinate points. So for A, we have a coordinate point at negative three, two. For B, we have a coordinate point at two, negative one. And for C, we have a coordinate point at three, comma one. So now that we have identified the coordinate points of the vertices that makes up this figure, what we're going to be doing now is just going to set up some kind of an algebraic or algorithm process, which the process is going to say, I'm going to take one half and I'm going to multiply it by the modules of the coordinate points. So I'm going to get coordinate point of A and the X coordinate I'm going to put on the top and the Y coordinate I'm going to put on the bottom. Then I'm going to move on in counterclockwise and I'm going to select the next vertex, which in this case, it is B. So for B, the X value, I want to put on the top and the Y value, I want to put on the bottom. Then I'm going to move on counterclockwise to get the next point, which in this case, it is C. And for C, the X value, I'm going to put on the top, the Y value, I'm going to put on the bottom. And I'm not just going to say A, B, C, I need to close the figure. So therefore, I need to go to A one more time. On the X value, I'm going to put on the top and the Y value, I'm going to put on the bottom and I'm going to close this. Now, this A, B, C and A business is just for us to just see exactly where these points are coming from. But at least these letters have nothing to do with the calculation that we're going to be using. Because what we want to do now is the following. What's going to happen in the inside is I'm going to multiply all those diagonals that are going from left to right going up. So I'm going to take a look at two and I'm going to multiply by the diagonal value that is going upper in an upper movement. And I'm going to try to do the same for all of them. So negative three should go to negative well, negative one should go to three and one should go to negative three. So this is what I'm going to refer to as the upper diagonals. And I'm going to do the same for the lower diagonals. So a negative one, I want to connect it with negative, I'm sorry, negative three, I want to connect it with negative one. Two, I want to connect it with one. And three, I want to connect it to two. And now you can start seeing why it's called the shoelace method, because it's kind of like what you're doing here is you're tying your shoelaces. So this is the reason why they call it the shoelace method. But what exactly are we going to be doing with this combination that we have just stated? Well, what we're going to be doing is the following. I'm going to get all those diagonals that are connected in an upper movement and I'm going to multiply them. So I'm going to take a look at my first diagonal, two and two. So I'm going to multiply them two times two, which gets me four. And I'm going to add the next upper diagonal movement, which is negative one times three, well, that's negative three. And I'm going to get one and I'm going to multiply times negative three and that gets me negative three and I'm going to close this. So all I did is those that match up, I'm going to multiply them and I'm just going to add the result. So two times two, that's how I got this four. Negative one times three, that's how I got this negative three. One times negative three, that's how I got this negative three right here. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to subtract I'm going to subtract the combination of those diagonals that are facing downwards. So let's multiply that combination. Negative three times negative one. Well, that's positive three. Two times one, that is two. So plus two. Three times two, well, that is six. And I'm going to close this because I'm taking the absolute value of all this or something that we call the modules. But that's a vocabulary that you're going to be looking at 
later in other classes, perhaps in linear algebra or something farther down the line than geometry. But just think about it just a logarithm, algorithm, sorry, an algorithm that we can use to justify the area of any polynomial. So now that we have such a setup, it's just a matter of simplifying all this. But what's important here is to understand how we get in this combination. So what I did, I took a look at all the vertices and I, I list them in order in a clockwise direction, counterclockwise direction. So I look at A, X value in the top, Y value in the bottom, B, X in the top, Y on the bottom, C, X in the top, Y on the bottom. And I need to close the figure, so therefore I need to go to A, X in the top, Y in the bottom. So I'm still just going to have one half absolute value of the summation of the products of the upper diagonal. So two times two, that's four. Negative one times three, negative three. One times negative three, that's negative three. And we're always going to subtract. So we're always going to subtract the lower diagonal value. So negative one times negative three, that's positive three. Two times one, that's two. Three times two, that's six. And now it's just a matter of simplifying all this. So let's just simplify all this. We got one half. Uh, four minus three minus three, so that's negative six. Negative six plus four, so that's negative two. Minus, so uh, let me just keep the colors. So it will be negative two minus, and then we got six plus two, so that's eight, nine, 10, 11, so that's 11. We'll just close this, and now let's just simplify this. So A is equals to one half, negative two minus 11, so that's minus 13. So let's continue all this. So this is gonna be one half, the absolute value of negative 13, it is 13. And now the area, it is 13 over two, which is exactly 6.5 units square. So notice that we get the same result, 6.5 units square, regardless if we use the encasing method or if we use what we call the shoelace method. And the whole idea for this lesson is to show you that we're not just bounded to equations to find the area of a figure. If you can place that figure in the coordinate plane, once you have that, then you can always use what we call the encasing method, which is just literally just box the figure and follow this procedure, or you could use the shoelace method and you would still find the same result. So if we were to define the value of the base and the value of the height, if we were to plug into the formula, I can assure you that we would have get 6.5 regardless, because that's the true area of this triangular figure. So this concludes our lesson for the area of polygons in the coordinate plane.